Okay, sir, I'll start. So yeah. basically this webinar, and this is the introductory webinar. So this is the very basics of writing a research paper and particularly architectural mm -hmm. research paper. And mainly, mainly meant for the students of architecture who have no experience in research writing or conducting a research or writing a paper. So it is explaining to them what are the format or what is the process. So I'm not sure whether it will benefit the faculty, but from the next, Three, for the next three webinars that we are organizing, they are hosted by more professional people and they have more, more experience in research and writing papers. So I think that will be even more beneficial to you. So please join the other three. This one is mainly meant for the students. So, so I'm not sure how it is, how much it will be beneficial for you. So please don't judge on that. The other three will be better, I'm sure. So I'm starting this. Yeah, I'll just briefly introduce uh, Soparni Paul. She is assistant professor at Geetam School of Architecture at Hyderabad. She has completed her uh, uh, graduation from Jadavpur University, then master's in landscape architecture from SPA New Delhi and her PhD from Jadavpur University. Is my screen visible, sir? Yes, yes, Sapurni, it is visible. Okay. So the topic of the webinar is tips and techniques on how to write a research paper. And today I will cover the basic research issues and concepts. So how to, how to, justify that what research you are doing, how to derive at it and how to choose a research topic and how to go on with it and a basic orientation towards the research process. Because since it is meant for students, so they are not aware, they may be, they are able to write an essay sometimes, a dissertation, but how to write a technical research paper. So this webinar, today's webinar is mainly meant for it. So when we talk of a research seminar or a research or any, paper writing. So what do we mean by your research? Usually for students, it sometimes happens like, okay, collecting data from the internet or from the book and putting them together is a research. And if somebody is, if somebody can do it, they say that, okay, I, I'm very good at research. I should take up research as my career. So the first thing in research is that it is not only about collecting data and putting them together in a format or in some, but we have to see that how it is benefiting the greater society or how it is adding to the body of knowledge that we already have. So what are the new facts? Even if it is a literature review that if somebody is doing a research on the modern materials, so the modern materials are already there. We can, anybody can look up the internet and find out how they are. But if somebody can elaborate a bit on it, like what are the importance, how is it different from the other material that is being used or something a little more, more analysis to it, then it will benefit the person who is reading that paper. Otherwise we can gain that knowledge from the internet or from the book, but that analysis is important and that analysis is basically adding to the body of knowledge or to the branch of knowledge on which that paper is written. So primarily it is collecting and organizing and evaluating data. Collection can be primary data collection from where you go to some site, go to some place and collect the data yourself, which is a primary data. It's, we call it uh, empirical research because it is your own data or it can be a secondary data, which somebody else has collected, maybe so for some other reason or for some other work and you are analyzing that data. So it is a secondary data, but the way you are analyzing and putting it forward to your audience or to your readers is how you are contributing. And then from the data, whether it is collected by you or from somebody else, how you are making the deductions and analyzing and reaching the conclusions. So even if somebody is doing a research on parametric architecture, so how, what are the data they have collected? and how they have analyzed analyze the data and putting it towards the audience is important. So what is your conclusion? That conclusion is the main output of that research. 
So that's why the, this is the, the process is important and the conclusion is important. And to see whether the conclusion is fitting the research aim or the objective that you have originally thought. That my idea is not only to collect data and put it in a format and present to you, but to give you a conclusion so that only by reading the conclusion, you will get some idea what is what it is about. So basically research and basically research for students at this level is a systematic process of collecting and logically analyzing the information or the collected data. Now, when we say architectural research, what do we mean by it? Just another moment, as many people have joined. So, architectural research is it's a written document that explores the specific topic related to architecture. So, if you see our web, our symposium poster, we have given six sub themes under a theme which mean which mostly covers all the aspects of architecture, planning, urban design as the build environment. So what exactly is your topic of research is explained that what is the broader theme and how it can contribute to the knowledge in the field of architecture. And whether it is a original research, whether you are going to some place, going to some site, doing some experiments, or you are collecting the data which is already prepared by others. And it will include the various aspects of the built environment. It, it can be a building, it can be only a building facade, it can be a building component, it can be the landscape, it can be the urban areas, it can be the sustainability aspects of it, it can be the modern new materials, and it can be even diverse field like the music in architecture, how do we relate music to architecture, the art and architecture. It can be as diverse as in your city that these are the famous women in architecture, Recently, because of gender equity as per sustainable development goals, the gender equity and societal equity is important. So we try to bring up the things which are not as common. Even when we say that architect, we always think that it's a male, but maybe a female is also very famous in your area. So if you just want to put up some of the works of that, that is also okay. So it can cover a wide range of topics from developing new materials and constructive techniques to a broader thing like what are the social and cultural implications of any architectural design or the urban design. So it, it's basically very broad because it's all around us. And it can be a specific case study. Maybe you can choose a particular street, a very historical street in your neighborhood or a simple a neighborhood street also and you can just connect that how the human emotions are connected to it what is the psychological effect when you're driving or you're walking through it or what are the broader themes so it can start from a small street style street side study and it can go up to any level and it will obviously include collecting and analyzing data, conducting surveys, in interviews, questionnaires, and analyzing. So basically, that the aim of the symposium is to demonstrate the student's ability to conduct independent research and analysis. So sometimes the research theme or the output is not very important, but the entire process. So if we see that, okay, the student had understood the process, even if it is a very simple theme like, how the interior of a restaurant is is designed according to the cuisine but this we see that the student has analyzed it very well and we can learn a lot from it then also we say it's a very good paper although we know about it that okay a chinese restaurant will look like this the music will be like this but if a student has analyzed it very well we will say that yes it's a very good paper a well written and well understood research so it is about your ability, how you can conduct the research independent, how you can put your information analysis together. So the research process is elaborate. This process can go up to a PhD of five, six, seven years, or it can be as small as writing a research paper, which you are writing for two months. But the overall process is the same. The length and duration is different. So first you start with, what what i am doing this for what is my research aim or what is my research topic or what is my research interest 
So first question is what? And to answer that what, you have to specify the research problem. That, okay, this is my problem. Sometimes this problem comes from analysis of the literature review that, okay, in the literature review, I can see this, this, this thing, but somehow this is missing in that. And I want to work on that missing thing and that is my problem. So that make, makes it a bit too complicated and it becomes a PhD problem. But for you, it can be a simple problem. Like I said that, how is cuisine of a restaurant is connected to the interior design of a restaurant? So it's a very simple problem but that also answers some research question. And after that, you have to design that, well, how do you do, do the research? So one is the research design and the data collection method. So this is the first thing. Research design is like, what, what do you want to do? What is the process? So whatever is your topic, how do you arrange to collect the data? How do you arrange to process? What are your data collection methods? What are your statistical tools? So sometimes statistical tools may not be as important when you're writing a student's paper, but in a advanced research, it becomes important. And from all of this, you put up the research proposal and then conduct the research, analyze, find out the results, and finally go up to the research, uh, the report writing stage. So the stages of research in a very short thing is that first statement of the problem, which includes the introduction, aim, objective of the research, and according to the objective, you collect the data. According to the data that you have collected, you have to process it or analyze it. And afterwards, take the action, like I have, you have to write the report. So the report can be a chapter in your architectural thesis. It can be a chapter in a PhD, or it can be a standalone paper by itself, which can be a part of a PhD or not. But it's the main output of that research process. Now, how do we start when, when we see that, okay, okay, I want to write a research paper. Or even when you are doing your architectural thesis, you are looking for a topic. How do we start? So first, first we have to see that what is our interest? Somebody may be interested in music, somebody in dance, somebody in photography, somebody, we don't know maybe the new, new sustainable methods that are there. So according to what is our interest and how do we relate it to architecture or our field of study, that's, a, that's the basic of, our, of defining our research or our interest. So for that, we have to read a few articles. We have to see what kind of work has already been done. Then we have to read the topics that is interesting to us. If I am interested in photography, I will see how that, that concept of photography has evolved over the years. And then we can relate it. And then we start reading a few papers. We have to see, read some papers and understand how it is written. What is the scope of that paper? How did that author formulate it? So, we cannot read all the papers. If you go to some website or some journal website, you cannot read all the papers. So we first try to read the abstract and see if the paper is important to us, if it is appealing to us that yes, we should read the paper, it is relevant to us. And then we identify, and then we see that, okay, if the abstract is good, it's, it is interesting. Then we read the rest of the paper and make notes from it. And then we, from that literature study, the different papers, we frame our research questions and objective. Research question is what I am, what I want to do in my research. And objective is how, how objective is like breaking up the research question and how to go about it. And what are the different methods and what are the most important findings? For a uh, student's paper, statistical analysis, I have said it's not very important, but we have to be critical and objective. Like, we cannot just copy paste things on the internet or from some book and say, this is my research. So you, even if you're copy pasting things, you have to be very critical, objective, analytical, and then write a definite conclusion, which will help somebody who is reading the paper. Otherwise somebody will say, why should I read the paper? I can get this information on the internet myself. So, When you are starting the research process, the first is 
select the research area. That research area can be a topic, it can be a particular area in your city, or it can be a particular component in a building. And then you formulate the research aim and objectives and conduct the literature, literature review. Now, very important is that this literature review can be done in two stages. First, when you are not sure what your research topic will be, then you do a literature review. You may not be knowing that, yes, I'm doing a literature review. You are just reading some documents or some articles or some papers written by others. But that is also part of the literature review because only after reading that you can arrive at your research problem or you can think, okay, in this, in this body of knowledge or in this thing that I have read, this thing is missing, so that's what my research problem is. Or this is very interesting, so I want to inquire further on it or I want to study more on it. So that is the preliminary literature review. And after you decide your topic, you go further into the details and you read more specific and relevant books, newspaper, journal articles, online articles. It can be a blog also. So all these things will be the your main literature review, which is done after the selection of the topic. And after that, you have to collect some data. It can be primary or secondary, as I have told. You can go to some site, you can talk to some people, interview, distribute a questionnaire, and collect the data from different sources. Or you can use the data already collected by some other person, maybe for some other use, but you are taking that data and using it for your own purpose. And after that, you have to analyze the data. Okay, I have seen this, and this is the response from the interviews, and this is and how I have analyzed that, okay, if five people are saying this thing and 10 people are saying this thing, then probably this is the most common thing. But that is your analysis. You may say that, okay, there's this kind of bias has been there or not there. So that's a more complicated process and it will come with experience. But the basic thing is that depending on the primary or the secondary methods of data collection, the information that you have collected will guide your data analysis and your final conclusions. Now, since a student's paper and you don't have a lot of time for writing a research paper because you are busy with your regular courses and other submissions. So usually we have seen that a student's paper is based on the secondary data. So I will elaborate what kind of secondary data you can use. So one example can be this report, thesis of other students, which may be published or unpublished, some emails that you've got, some conference proceedings, uh, company reports, which we call technical reports. It can be by the government or it can be by some NGO or some private company. Unpublished manuscript, like somebody has done some work but never published it. He or she can give you that work and you can elaborate more on it. Or some government publication. So these are, Sometimes called the primary sources, but primary source, primary collect data collected by these agencies, which you will use for your purpose. And there are some authentic journals, books, newspapers, government publications, which are more authentic and more reliable. Because if you just refer some email or some company reports, you don't know whether they are reliable or not. But these journals, since they go through a process of reviews and validation so they are more reliable and it is expect it is i won't say expected it is like you should be following these art articles so the validity of the data is very important and tertiary is that so, some data is already mentioned in a journal or a book but you take that reference and you see what is the origin of this data so that is the tertiary level of data sources that I find this citation, I go up to that to that particular article and I see what exactly has been done, what exactly has been the say, say, census data on that time, what exactly has been the statistical data from that other website and that becomes your tertiary source. So that's about data collection. So now we see how to compose a research paper. So usually in a journal, in a peer reviewed journal, they give you a format. So similarly, we have also given you a format. And if you can frame it in that format, so usually the research is well understood. So first will come the title. The first thing in your paper is the title and 
obviously that is the title of your research and it will have your name also what is the what is your affiliation whether you're a student or a faculty or working for some agency with so if you're a student then what is your learning institution that i am a student of geetan school of architecture hyderabad campus and if you have affiliate if you have more than one affiliation then you can put that if you have any guiding faculties that so and so has guided you you can write that this is my supervisor or so with this people have helped me so it can come in the title page itself or it can come as a acknowledgement later so depending on how much guidance you have got from that person it is up to you whether you want to put it in the put it after your name in the beginning of the paper or you put it in the acknowledgement later and after that it's the abstract now abstract is basically a summary or synopsis of the entire paper so abstract will state your research problem which is the introduction of the paper it will briefly describe the research process methods the data collection method you have done in one or two lines in two lines it will describe the re results also and the conclusion our abstract usually of is of half a page which is 200 to 250 words and it briefly describes the entire process and the in information that is there in the research paper and how well you write your abstract will also determine how many people are reading the paper because obviously somebody cannot read the entire paper at the same time when a researcher is reading thousands of paper so if your abstract is well written and covering all the aspects of your research then it is better because that will draw the researcher's at attention whoever is reading your abstract and make him or her read the rest of the paper next comes the introduction in the introduction you will state the research what is the research aim objective what you want to do what has not been covered in that field of research so that is your research that is the missing link that you want to address in this research so it is the it is like stating the problem what is this research all about what is the basis of this research that this is not this has not been done or i want to do it for this purpose what is what has been what is the reason of you doing the research so introduction is also the it should become very not very long it should be like one page to one and half page maximum and it should be interesting enough so that the people the people reading it should continue reading the rest of your paper and after that literature review it is also one of the most important parts because particularly in a phd or when you are writing a journal paper because that is the basis of what is the missing link and what your research is about for a student this literature review particularly is not very important but for a phd researcher or a or somebody who has taken research as a career this becomes very important that this work has already been done by so and so so it can be in a format of a table it can be in a format of paragraphs also with proper dates and the name of the researchers with citations and on the basis of that this is the missing link i want to i am working towards it for the students paper this this part as a literature review in a paper is not very important because sometimes this literature review will be the main body of your paper so if you are doing a if you are writing a paper on secondary data this is the literature review which is the main body of your paper and you have to draw some conclusion based on it so in that case your literature review will not be a part of that paper and then comes the materials and methodology so every research every paper will have this materials and methodology in which materials are the documents or sources of data that you have used and methodology is how you have got it can be a primary data it can be a secondary data if it is a primary data if there is a questionnaire if there is a interview questions if there is a sampling thing then how have you done that methodology and we usually attach it at the end of the research when we are submitting a phd thesis we usually put it as a appendix that these are the sampling techniques these are the questionnaires these are the interview fields that we have conducted and this is the 
results of it, but we mainly include the results and the conclusion in the research paper. If we put all the sampling techniques and if we put all the question questionnaires, then your research paper will be very long. We don't want that. So we elaborate on the methodology and the materials and it has to be very logical. So we cannot make it very long, but at the same time, we have to make it big enough so that people understand the process and the materials that we have used. And after that is the results, how we have analyzed the data. So if you have gone somewhere, collected the data, you analyze it with the help of photographs, your sketches, and put it in the paper. And discussion is the next step. So results is just stating the results or what you have got from your study. And discussion is one step ahead of it where you're discussing the results. Sometimes results and discussion are together with some that if they are not separate, so we can say that subhead has results and discussion. Sometimes we state the results and make the discussion later followed by a conclusion. Conclusion and discussion, it may sound similar, but it is not exactly similar because just like you have written the abstract, which is a gist of your entire paper, summary of your entire paper, this conclusion part in a research paper is also the same thing, but more focusing on the results. So when you are writing the conclusion of the result of, of your research, then you should again start with that this research is based on this that was the research aim objective. This is how the research has been done. And this is the results of this research. So abstract and conclusion are similar. Abstract focuses on the more on the topic and the process, while the conclusion focuses more on the results and the discussion. But otherwise, they are more or less similar. Usually, a researcher reads the abstract and the conclusion or either of it to get a hang of what exactly your paper is all about. So these are the most binding elements in your paper and should be very well composed and give a good overview of what your paper is all about. So even when you send your paper to some journal, or even if you send it to, like if it is a research symposium and if you are sending it to the reviewers of this symposium, then probably they will also read this abstract and the conclusion because when we receive hundreds of okay, hundreds of research articles, it is not possible for us to go through all of them. So we will read the abstract and conclusion, and then we will decide, is it pertaining to our symposium theme and sub theme or not? Is it actually helping the greater audience if somebody reads? And then only we will see that, okay, if it is worth reading or not. So it is very important on how you write the abstract and the conclusion. And after that, we have to write the reference and bibliography. We have seen that students are lacking in that as students and even as researchers, we also faced a lot of problem in writing the references. So should we paraphrase it or not? Should we put the exact text or not? Or how do we cite it? So that's why the next webinar that we have kept on the 13th of May is mainly about referencing bibliography. It will be hosted by the deputy librarian of our university, Mrs. Lina Siddhartan, and she will elaborate more on this, so I am not doing it in details. But references and bibliography is very important because that will justify the, your literature review, your findings. So, and, and so it is very important, that's what I want to say, and we will cover it as a separate webinar in the next session. And this is the more or less format of the paper. So that's mainly about it. If you have any questions, we can say. Otherwise, I will pass this on to Geeti ma'am for sharing her experiences in writing a paper and if she can able elaborate on it further. So. Um, thank you, Dr. Saupadni. Good afternoon. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was a very nice uh, presentation. And I should say that you have covered the most of the topics on basics of writing a research paper and how to start about. Uh, to add my observations when I was started writing initially, as, as uh, Ma'am was also rightly saying that uh, the moment we start searching, we get, uh, you know, we are uh, 
we get a lot of information on internet and various web sources. So probably we can first start filtering out with the most uh, recent data, like maybe last two, three years. So any papers or uh, book article, book sections or any chapters that were published in the similar kind of uh, research work over the past two, three years, we can start uh, basing, I mean, filtering out the papers from there. And as uh, she also rightly said, we first read the abstract and uh, Believe it or not, I did. I first, when I initially started reading abstracts, I abstracts, I did not understand a bit of it. So we need about uh, three, four readings at least uh, on every abstract, and to understand what is the intent of uh, or the main aim for writing the research paper that uh, we are going through, and what is the uh, uh, con what are the conclusions? What are what is that it is achieved through writing that research paper? What is what are they trying to convey? Is more important. And so once uh, we read the abstract, we jump to the conclusions and try to link between these two, right? uh, reading the abstract and reading the conclusions. And then we try to link both of them. And uh, it, it is very common since architecture students are not very aware of, uh, or we are not particularly reading anything about statistical analysis. The moment we see analysis and uh, other things, it, it is, Oh, very, it's very scary. But at a uh, student research symposium level, I don't think as uh, we need any statistical okay. analysis, but a clear understanding. So yeah. at the end of the day, uh, the yeah. the process of writing helps us to refine our thoughts and you know uh, helps us in analyzing something with a critical perspective. Uh, it is not just merely writing, but the moment we start writing, we start filtering our thoughts as to. What are we writing? How, how should we write it? And what should be presented? Uh, uh, how do we convey our message on paper? Because we, we won't be standing behind and narrating the story. So any person who reads our paper, who reads our article, mm -hmm. should be, uh, you know, uh, understanding what we exactly intended to, to talk about. So that clarity in writing is what we should achieve. But that comes with practice again. That is what I have understood. Uh, so that is one thing. So abstract and conclusions is what I said. And as also Sopani Ma'am said that uh, uh, it is uh, the literature review may not be very important at this level, but clarity in writing and critical aspects have, you know, that it should be critical in its, uh, in its, um, what should I say? Uh, presentation should be critical. Critical in the, the moment I say it, it should be your your understanding and how do you relate it with the body with uh, with two other simultaneous things that are pro probably or possibly going together. So I think uh, that should be good enough. So. I will uh, ask uh, Sudhir, Professor Sudhir, to add something on this webinar. Yeah, Sudhir. Sudhir, sir? Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to uh, put on my video. Sorry. No problem, sir. Uh, so, the, I mean, the presentations were excellent. Uh, Dr. Saponi Paul has given a very good uh, overview and a very good structure of how uh, uh, research should be done and paper. Uh, and uh, uh, next faculty, faculty, I believe I didn't register her number, um, her, her name. Uh, Kitty. Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Knight. Okay, that was excellent uh, add-on. Um, like my point is, uh, uh, research is nothing new. What I this is my personal observation that research is uh, not a new thing for architects, uh, because right from their uh, uh, undergrad, um, they do a case study, they do literature study. And uh, while doing so, they uh, prepare a methodology of how uh, they conceive the ideas. So this process is done. But what I feel is the approach uh, that we are talking about, um, 
like uh, research uh, today in architecture is new and all that is new like uh, in the sense we are um, we are now uh, shifting to new tools like uh, we we can relish uh, having food with your hands uh, and the process is the same uh, you get uh, a good digestion and then you get uh, good strength and a lot of things happen and you still gain uh, uh, good energy and uh, you can also have it with spoon fork so i think that is the uh, difference in tools that architects are uh, new to relatively uh, is what makes the difference so we talk about statistics and research uh, we talk about uh, different survey methods though we have been doing we have been doing uh, surveys and case studies uh, in our design so that, that is what i would like to uh, stress upon more so uh, one need not uh, worry about uh, research is new thing uh, something like that but what is important what tools you use for analysis that becomes uh, really uh, challenging for uh, architects who are relatively new for this areas uh, i think uh, this is what i would like to add uh, hope it has helped uh, some uh, thank you uh, director sir for giving me the opportunity uh, as uh, all the speakers uh, were talking about uh, uh, research is not new to any architect student student of architecture research uh, he he starts from his first semester itself but writing a paper is what is the new challenge right and uh, because uh, community the research community has some uh, uh, set of guidance guidelines and and a set of uh, what do you say a template right because uh, uh, if the research has to be understood right so it is understood in that template that is that is the reason it, it becomes a little challenge for the students of architecture if not uh, approach of research is there for them they would have they would have been doing it for a long time and uh, very critically also because yeah, all every time you uh, you make a presentation uh, there is a critical analysis of what you have collected what you have understood and what you are talking about and then that gives you a feedback and you improve on it you collect more or whatever the uh, setbacks or shortcomings were there you figure it out isn't it but uh, the only challenge for stu uh, students of architecture is the template of uh, writing that research paper because it's very very essential that we have to get into that practice the research paper writing so that everyone understands us very similarly because research is happening all over the world and everyone has their own uh, background or intention uh, and but if someone else has to understand that okay, so there has to be on a, a template which everyone would be able to understand so say uh, abstract why should we write an abstract when uh, there is when we are going to talk about the research why should we start with an abstract right because if as you started reading abstracts to understand what is happening so that is one uh, what is a important step of uh, your research isn't it so uh, that template is very very important you have to write an abstract so that the intention is understood easily if not no if i have to read uh, papers or if i have to read a research work of say 100 people so when will i do my research isn't it so abstract writing is very important and very critical so how do we do that so maybe uh, maybe a, a, a researcher from english uh, literature would be able to tell you uh, <coughs> very accurately how you in a small one paragraph the whole content is uh, uh, written right articulated right in the same way uh, why should we write references where we have read why should someone know where we have read 
right it's very very important that because the uh, the other person who is reading your research paper will understand right so this is the scope of the research there so much is happening and and happening when not just now maybe you would have referred a paper which is 30 years old right from a journal and that is relevant for your research so everyone will be able to understand okay what is the um, overall uh, ecosystem of that research paper right the, it can be time it can be uh, what they say researchers right so all that you will be able to understand when you actually document the references and then the bibliography right so this uh, approach new approach of um, putting whatever uh, you have understood into a uh, curated or modulated or a template is important, very, very important. And when you do that, the value of your work increases by many folds, right? You can send it to a journal, right? And if there is a, a knowledge that is very important for everyone, the journal will publish it, right? So if you write a, a book chapter and send it to a journal, I don't think they would, because book chapter is a different method, approach is different, right? So research paper writing is very, very uh, critical and articulating that research paper is very, very important because that actually um, gives, uh, what they say, a lot of uh, uh, importance to the work that you are doing the whole work that you are trying to do, it gets uh, amplified with your research paper. So <clears throat> thank you, Soparni and Kirti and Sudhir uh, for those uh, wonderful uh, insights. And uh, I'm sure everyone here uh, would be eager to write a research paper, or start writing research paper and mind you, uh, there will be a lot of blocks, all right? There will be a lot of blocks when you are writing this, when you are doing this, all right? So uh, don't stop. We, we are available to help the students any anytime they want. Anytime yeah, they want. that's what. Don't stop. Uh, don't stop. Look for someone who, who has uh, that experience, uh, research paper writing, and you can go, uh, go to them and actually Soparni, Kirti, Sudhir, there are so many resources that are available at GSA. So everyone, everyone can just make a call or connect them on internet, all right, and then uh, work further, all right. So uh, it has been uh, an experience for all the researchers uh, that there will be blocks and there will be depressing moments also, right? So don't get trapped into them, right? So uh, keep fighting and uh, uh, it's uh, very, what is a very happy moment when you actually complete one paper. And that experience itself, that experience itself will add a lot of uh, value to your professional skills, right? So uh, maybe we, uh, for every one architect, for every architect, presentation is one uh, asset like sketching or other skills, uh, skills in Revit or uh, CAT. Research writing will actually uh, will be the topmost skill if you start uh, doing it and successfully. And that would be one great skill any architect should uh, have. So jump into it and figure out. And uh, definitely, you will need this uh, help, so don't mind taking help. That's all, right? Okay. Yeah. And any of the students or faculty members, if you want to share your experience or your queries on writing a research paper. Yeah, we. I think uh, we had the faculty you know, from other institutes. Ravin, sir, 
So anyone if okay, you, if you have any questions, please write to us or call us. Our number, phone numbers are given on the posters webinar link. And I just want to share the webinar poster once again. So today was just an introductory session on over the overall process of research writing. But the next three sessions, particularly by Lena, ma'am, Dr. Shivaji, Dr. Faisal, or Ranavir Dev. They will be more intense because they are more experienced researchers. Lena ma'am will elaborate on the citations and also the research tools and tools for writing a research paper like Grammarly, like Turnitin. So how do you paraphrase? How do you change your, the same paper, how you can present it in different ways or how to make it sound more technical, how to cite them properly, how to write the bibliography properly how to go about your research uh, on your literature review. She will be elaborating on it. She is very much experienced in that. Dr. Shivaji from IIT Hyderabad, he is an experienced academician researcher and at the same time an architect. So he has a long experience in both industry and he is a product designer also. He has done his post-graduation from NID. So based on his multidisciplinary background, how to write a paper or how to go over to research, the multiple research fields he will elaborate on it. Dr. Faiz Ahmed from SPA Vijayawada, how he guides his PhD students and how he helps them to write a paper he will elaborate on that. Dr. Ranavidhi is a mechanical engineer with over 700 citations and a large number of papers. He is also an experienced researcher guiding PhD students. So, we got him from a different background on it should not be only architectural. If you want to deviate from the field and you want to go into product design or UIX interface or anything. So how do we relate that with architecture and, and expand our scope of research? So please join the next three or four webinars. It will be very beneficial to you as a researcher or as a student also. So be in touch whenever needed. Yeah, one request, uh, please share it with your friends uh, so that uh, people who are looking for some something like this, they all know and they can be part of this. And uh, uh, Geetam School of Architecture, Hyderabad and Vishakapatnam, we have been doing webinars on uh, the topics of interest for students of architecture and architects. So please uh, share. Uh, uh, <clears throat> with all your friends and colleagues. Good morning, sir. Director, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Sir, there is a very nice event and uh, all the speakers has covered uh, most of the essence of writing a paper. I would like to share my uh, points to the audience. Like uh, uh, it's our entire course is totally structured uh, in a very fantastic way. And uh, in the final semester, we have a research uh, seminar also where we are covering uh, different methodologies and uh, criteria for writing a journal or doing a research. The ethical way of uh, giving references or citations, styles of citations, these are the very basic things. Since we have, uh, the available uh, sources, it's a good uh, start. And I would like to highlight uh, one important uh, point like to all the audience, writing a journal is an international uh, uh, knowledge. What we are trying to do is at the international platform that is going to be published or refined further with the different journals. So we need to keep that in mind and one more important point is whatever literature available in that topic is, is something like out of 100 books or 10 books, we are going to refine and keep it in into 10 or 20 pages. So that's the best thing a journal is going to do for the further knowledge share. The essence of writing a journal is like on the topic and uh, coming to our uh, profession, it's a multidisciplinary. So it's not like we need to go with the core uh, ideology topics only. We can combine, mix, and uh, whatever is related to our uh, uh, profession, we can cover those topics also. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kataka. Yeah. 
Yes, Sopani, we can conclude. Yes, sir. So I think Kanaka sir has concluded it already. We don't need to add to it. Yeah. So that's all for today. Please be there for the next few webinars on the 13th of May, 27th of May, 10th of June, and 24th of June for the next four sessions. And in between, if you have any queries, any suggestions, please reach out to us. Yeah, everyone, please concentrate on writing that paper, research paper. <laughs> because the, <laughs> that is what the destiny we are looking at, right? Yes. Uh, and even if it is not relevant to this particular symposium, even if you want to discuss your paper yeah. just for some peer review, we are always available. We would also like to learn from everybody else. Yeah, everyone. Right. So thank you. So we'll call it a day today and we'll wait for the next webinar. Right. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah.